is going on, YouTube family? We got myself, Eric Janicki, and none other than the man, the myth, the legend. I'm standing in his house. I can't believe it right now. Greg Doucette. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to be putting Greg through an upper body workout push pull because he is so dug into the cycling training. We cannot do legs. That's always what I like to do with people. But we're going to be doing an upper workout today, and I'm going to let him grade my exercises, which is kind of terrifying, but kind of fun at the same time. So I need to get my mind right for this workout, my body right for this workout. So I'm gonna let Greg put together my pre-workout concoction for me. Well, I weigh everything out because sometimes the scoops don't add up and you might take too little of something or too much. And so this is what I do. I'm taking 10 grams, which is one and a quarter scoops of hardcore. The guy your size, you probably use a lot more. I'm only doing 10 grams. I add in one gram of beta alanine for that extra kick endurance. Also five grams of creatine. And before that, we're gonna take three tablets of Ecti Builder, three tablets of GO2 Max, just to have extra endurance, extra cardio, and to help you build muscle. Mm. Oh, it's my favorite flavor. That's actually delicious. But without further ado, we'll see you guys at the gym. You'll actually see us in the Lambo. Scratch that, you will see us in the Lamborghini. train with an, another IFU pro, Santana Anderson. He owns a gym. He's letting us use this gym. Excited? I'm over the moon excited for this. I've been waiting for this moment all day. I've been grinding on content, but now it's time to do what I love the most. All right, first exercise. We're gonna start with a really good lat activation exercise that I enjoy doing. If you guys have this, it's a great tool with the split handle. So what I'm gonna do is a kneeling, alternating pull down. So the reason I like it kneeling Two reasons, one is, is it allows for greater range of motion. Everything I do is gonna be a bigger stretch. And then the alternating is allows for isolation of one side than the other and you can move pretty ergonomically with the pattern. So I'll show you how this looks. So we're gonna come down here, tuck underneath, both kneeling. We're gonna stretch at the top. So we wanna open up the lats, this is our first exercise. So we wanna open up here. We're gonna dig that elbow underneath, good scapular retraction, pulling that shoulder down and back and kind of leaning into that side, slow release through the lat. We're gonna go to the right, dig that elbow underneath, slow on the release. Then into the left, really focusing on that peak contraction. You almost wanna feel like you're elbowing somebody behind you and squeezing almost pinching that lat towards the very bottom. Opening up at the top, leaning into it, digging in. We're gonna go for 10 to 12 each side. Don't rush this movement. Really squeeze in, slow on the release. Okay, so I can see there's a long time under tension here, and it's the first set. So do we use a weight that's super light? Should be we tired? Like, where do I go? Like 50% right, of right. what I could lift? Or? Probably 75%. Okay, you so it's be... fairly hard, not super hard, but a, hard, a moderately hard warm up. I'm aware of the mindset of like, we have a finite amount of time in the gym. So I'm not gonna use my first two, three, four sets of an exercise as like quote unquote priming sets. I'm trying to drive hypertrophy from that very first 
set. So I might not be at 99% of what I could do, but I'm probably around like 80%. Okay. And so we're not wasting any time in the gym. And because you're using such great control, I don't think there's any risk of injury. It's not like you're no. ego lifting, super slow control, pause reps. So I can't see any problem with lifting kind of heavy on your first set, even though it's a warm up set, it's still well in control. Exactly, so. All right, I'm gonna put a lot less weight than you're using just to make sure I can actually do it. All right. So yep, we're using straps, guys, because if you're doing a lot of time under tension with back, to be very hard for you. All right, can so, I sit like this? It's up to you. All right, we'll try it like this. So stretching at the top, stretch squeeze the top. one arm at a time. And I want you to get a little more supination at the bottom of the rep. All right, curl So you can really dig in at the bottom. All right. And then we're gonna alternate, right, left and right. Good, okay, your back looks crazy on these. Does this look at good speed or would I even want to slow it down more? That's perfect. Good speed here, okay. Now, if I did them at the same time, would that take away, like if I did this, would that so take the away reason, from it a little bit? The reason I like to alternate is then you can actually lean, almost lean into that okay, side. Okay, so I want to slightly lean to the Slight side. lean, so you can basically benefit from the ergonomics of doing them alternating, as opposed to both at once. Obviously, you can't get that nice ergonomic lean into that and get that extra scapular attraction, extra engagement through your lower lats. Maybe just comment on like if it looks good or not. I'll stand on this side and see. Yeah, and then there's a bit of a stretch. Because then you can, and you then can almost handle. lean out to that side. And then this handle. I prefer like that, yeah. One hand at a time. So you can relax the right and then go right then left. So start with a stretch. Okay. Start with the stretch. Yeah, and then one at a time. And then go one at a time. Yeah. So left and then right. And then kind of lean out to the side. And I want to go use a bit super slower. Go a bit slower and I want you to try to, yeah, there you go. Really squeeze the bottom of the rep. And with your right hand, Please. instead of pulling here, I want you to supinate that grip at the bottom. So you're gonna go pronation to supination at the bottom. So now that's, so supinate, opposite. Right there at the bottom. And then Palms pronate up, and at then the top. And let the stretch. Yep. Feel that, when you supinate, you feel that, so you get so much more lack contraction. But do you think it matters if you did, let's say you did all 10 on the right and then all 10 on the left, any difference or back and forth, whatever feels better? The biggest thing is like the grip fatigue if you're gonna, or like if you were to just do one and let the other hand go free. So there's another variant that I actually like a lot, which is like a lower lat. So let's say I were to do my second set like that. What I would do is I'm gonna go cross handle because these move. Yep. And what I'm gonna do is actually an even more exaggerated lower lat variant. So what I'm gonna do is here, drop just one knee, and you see how much stretch I get yeah. around that. Basically it's called like wrapping around the scap. I'm gonna stretch here, and then dig underneath here. Same supinated kind of format. Big open reach for it. I'm gonna feel that stretch almost all the way through my hip, and then dig underneath. So that way, see how much, basically by oh, leaning way across. Stretch at the top. By, by leaning across the movement pattern, I'm able to get so much more of that lat engagement. Big stretch open at the top, then dig in, pulling that shoulder down and back. I rarely do one arm at a time, so for me it's a challenge, so it's good to try new stuff. Let's see how I end up liking this one. I find with single arm variants, with back especially, first of all, I can move more ergonomically with the movement pattern, but I get better contraction and engagement because of the fact that I can move and really dig underneath and focus on one at a time. Three more. Oh. 
Oof, oh boy. But the other thing about these movements is I find they're almost like therapeutic in the sense that as I'm training, I'm almost opening up the tissue just as much as I'm contracting it. So that instead of just trying to go super heavy and only focusing on the contraction, I'm just as focused on that stretch. And so it's opening up my tissue as I continue to train. So I almost feel better as the workout progresses because of the fact that I'm training those long, ranges of motion, those sarcomeres that make up your muscle, if you train them super short and like that, they're gonna start to shorten on you. And that's why a lot of bodybuilders get the joke of walking around like muscle oh, bound, muscle less bound. range of motion. Whereas everybody looks at me and they're like, well, you still actually look pretty athletic and mobile. It's cause I train like this, not cause I do hours and hours of mobility weeks, which nobody has time for. Now, have you ever tried this at the end of your workout as opposed to the start? And if so, does it make a difference on how you feel? Like, is this better served at the start? I enjoy it at the start because it allows me to open up. And then when I get to more of my core compounds, seated row, bent over row, everything's so opened up yeah. and primed. And I have that blood flow and engagement where I want to hit. Oof. Oof. Yeah. All right. I'll give this a try. Uh, put the 145. I think. What's this? All right. So what you're gonna do is actually center behind. So move across, cross, cross, cross. A little more. Further that way? Yeah, a little bit. Right there. So right behind it. And oh then yeah, you almost want to trying to stretch it that way. You almost want to cheat the body this direction so you can get Because like I'm already feeling a really big stretch in yep, the back. Yep, there you go. So supinated grip pretty yep. much, pull down. And there where you do go. you put your hand here, anywhere? Yep, control it there. Stretch. I feel like I'm a kid hanging on the monkey bars. It's <laughs> exactly. really stretching my lats here. There it is. Nice contraction. Look how much, look how good his back looks when he does these. See how much that stretches all the way to that lower lat. And it doesn't he, feel like a lot of weight, but it's hard. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And so pretty much go to failure there. Yeah. So we're gonna go into, we recording? now we're we... firing, now the lats are firing from those single arm movements we're doing. So we're gonna go into a more compound pull down with the mag grip. These are one of my favorite grips, just ergonomically. So we're gonna get a good stretch at top like always. Pull down, good squeeze, four to six on that eccentric. Opening up, kind of reaching those elbows up so you can get more of that. Okay, so you stretch right at the top. Some people, they stop shy of no, the stretch. I like to get you that, like to use the stretch use at the top. Use that stretch, because we want to get that stretch mediated hypertrophy, meaning they've shown scientifically you're going to get even more hypertrophy at peak stretch under load, as you will at peak contraction for a lot of movement patterns, specifically pulling. So I want to milk that, get that big stretch, drive down, squeeze in. And is it still 10 to 12? Yeah. Usually your rep range? I'm gonna probably take this one closer to 12 to 15. Okay. So you can see he's leaning back slightly here, getting a full range of motion and an extra stretch at the top. Mm. So he's really going through the full range of motion as much as humanly possible. Mm. I'll probably fire it through a few extra kind of pass fairly rough. And you do so. some parcels at the end sometimes just to mm. really bang it out. All right. All right, so full stretch.
So I want you to really all right, top of the wrap. wrap. So stretch out Reach as far as it. I can here. Slight lean. And squeeze in, there you go, perfect. Slow on that eccentric. Yeah, open drive squeeze. Milk that stretch, milk it, and then dig it. Good, three. Biggest difference here is I don't usually go as far up, but with that extra stretch, it makes it a bit harder. Seven. Eight. Nine. Go one more with that slow tempo, and then let's fire through some failure reps. Good, now fire through five to six faster reps. One, two, let's go. Three, give me three more. Two more. Last one. There it is. Good shit. Very nice. Oh. It's a, a pump and a pump into three quarters. Oh yeah. Feels good. More pump than last time for sure. Yeah. Uh, Next one we're gonna do a pullover with a lot of isolation. So a lot of people when they do their pullovers, we're gonna use a Vulcan, you can use a rope as well. But a lot of people, when they do their lat pullovers, they'll do them here, and they'll get a, inevitably a ton of rear delt and tricep. What we're gonna do is actually match the vector of force. So if we wanna get lat engagement, and this is our point of force, this is, where the, this is where the weight is coming from. That's what I always say with vector of force. Vectors of force are very important when it comes to lifting, because lifting is physics. So what we wanna do is actually match the angle of our body with the cable. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna hinge at the hips, I'm gonna lean back, and I'm gonna match that angle. I'm also gonna supinate my grip. So we've talked about lat engagement being a lot about supinating that grip. And I wanna flare the elbow slightly, and then I'm gonna dig underneath, squeeze, keeping that body position relatively low, arching the back, really good posture, big open at the top stretch, drive and squeeze at the bottom of the rep. So I can see this, the general pattern is very deep stretching at the top of each exercise. Yep, because we want to keep those lats nice and opened up for multiple reasons. One is for growth. The other one is for longevity because, sure, I could do these pullovers here and I'm going to get some lat engagement, but I'm also shortening those movement patterns. So my, by, short, by training in those short range of motion, my body's gonna get used to that. Whereas if I train here, I don't have to focus on doing a lot of mobility work because I'm already so opened up and feel my lats right now, they're still engaged. I've taught my body over time to stay engaged even in those even length positions. Yeah. So I'm not just letting it go. The, the misconception I think is I'm losing contraction. I'm actually getting a ton of lat engagement even here. See how I flare out yeah. and I get that big engagement through the lat for driving in. Never done it with this kind of a, a grip before, so it'll be different. So you're gonna right. grab, yeah, kind of in there, perfect. What I want you to do is back up, match the angle of the cable with your upper body, arch back, supinate the grip. Okay, even, flare more, the even elbows. more than this? Yep, flare okay. the elbows out slightly, feel that engagement before you even pull in. All right, so I want the lats engaged before I even start. Yep. Pull in, squeeze, squeeze and then reach slow out. Slow on the out and then reach for it. Stretch. There you go. Nice. Good. Big stretch, there it is. Yes. Give me one more tempo and then fire through. Good, now fire through some failure reps. Nice, give me four more, three more. 
two. Last one. Yeah. And so by using strict control, doing a lot of reps and then doing that quicker tempo, we're increasing the time and intention. Correct. Forcing the muscle to grow. And also you've, by using those slow reps, you built up a lot of tax in the lats. So when you fire through those, what more people consider like normal tempo reps, you built up that hypoxicity in the tissue. There's a limited amount of oxygen available. So we're going from slow switch to fast switch, small to large muscle fibers. At the end, we're really kind of digging through those. Still with good form, we're just speeding them up a bit. I think a big mistake people use is they would use the too heavy of a weight and cheat the reps from rep number one exactly. versus saving it for when you kind of get tired again and then adding that as an extra. Absolutely. And just to prove that you can lift weight with control, somebody left this on the stack and they probably were not doing the form I'm about to do. Um, but we're gonna do nice controlled V-grip rows. So I'm not saying that there's never a time or a place to like kind of lift heavier, but it's always like within that modality of like control. So I've taken the time to, to like go lighter and build up my form with lighter weight so that I can now lift heavier, still like focusing on that form. So even though I have the stack on here, about 300 pounds, Still big negative. Try to get that full range of motion. Flat back. Now, do you find it matters where you pull the bar, like into your lower stomach or versus your chest? Yeah, I like do to kind of hit. Focus a certain area. Over I like another? to hit upper, like kind of like mid. Mid. Abdomen, lower abdomen, because if yeah. you go pull high. You're gonna hit a lot of like upper back. Yeah, and I find you can do that with like a T-bar or, or something like that rather than this exercise. So I try to fish out. So basically, fairly strict at the start and then at the yep, end, fire through do five a bit six. of the quicker reps. Is it like, just like we did on the other yep, sets? exactly. All right, I'm gonna do that. Guys, please note that Greg carries around a mini fan with him whenever he trains, which is... Especially with a lot of cardio. I'm always trying to stay cool. I love All that. Right. Uh. Nice. Oh, nicely done. Yeah, my back was starting to get tired at the end. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do another one. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go a, a, a variant here that I like. So we can get more stretch. We're gonna plant this forearm, plant this front foot, and then we're gonna dig underneath. So big stretch, open yeah. that lat up, and then dig underneath. All right, so this is it. Okay, so big stretch here. I like that first exercise, except leaning forward slightly. We're really just trying to kind of tuck that elbow in underneath. Get that nice squeeze of the bottom, slow on that eccentric. Open. So just trying to utilize this machine for as much range of motion as it'll, it'll allot us. So how much rest do you do between sets? Because you're doing the right arm and then the left arm. Then you take like a Six, two minute break? Yeah, or 60 to 90. Not very long, short rest. So I, told, I say rest times are not all created equal. So depending on the movement pattern, your rest time should differ. If you're doing a 
tricep push down with a rope, that rest time can be much shorter than a squat. a squat or a heavy ass leg press. Like you have to understand that the rest times are not created equal. So you can't just say, oh, for hypertrophy, the ideal rest time is 90 seconds. Sure, if you're doing maybe lateral raises, but if you're doing like barbell squats with a four second negative for 12 to 15 reps, you better be taking a freaking three to four minute rest between those sets. You're gonna get so taxed. Your second, third, fourth set are gonna be so bad. You're gonna basically have to drop down the weight to about 50%. So you need to realize your rest time should be basically predicated on the movement pattern being performed. So this one I could probably get away with since I'm doing one arm than the other. It's not quite as taxing as a dual row like the one in there. I'd probably get away with uh, doing right arm, left arm, and then about a 60 to 90 second rest and then yeah. popping back in. Yeah, and how hard you push yourself is gonna depend too. Like if you go to absolute failure and beyond, you need to rest longer than if you kept two reps in reserve because you're just not needing as much recovery. don't believe me at this body weight that I have no aches and pains, no shoulder, no knees, no lower back. But I think it's due to the fact that I train like this that I keep my body so healthy. Well, so it's, it's almost like you're an athlete at the same time as being a bodybuilder because these things are keeping you stretched out. If you don't, you're not gonna be able to do it for too long. All right, guys, we are actually, there was so much valuable content in that back day. We're gonna do chest next. We're gonna break this into two videos. So thank you, Greg. What did you think about that back workout? 10 out of 10 workout. I can't believe how much engagement I had. Learned so much from this guy. Highly recommend you go and check him out. Great content. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this. If you're not subscribed to Greg, go and subscribe to his channel. So much value. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please, it would mean the world to me. Hit that sub button for me, please, guys. Hit that bell notification. Always, always appreciate you. I will catch you guys on the next video.